Ladies and gentlemen, our program is about to begin. As a reminder, your seat backs and tray tables must be placed in their upright and locked positions. Children's Flight of Hope, Denim and Diamonds, is about to take off. Good evening, everyone. I'm Caroline Blair with Spectrum News One, joining you here from Raleigh Durham International Airport. You know, each and every day there are a number of flights that come and go from this very location, just like others around the world, but none, none more important than those carrying a child served by Children's Flight of Hope. See, back in 1991, this organization literally took off with one goal in mind to help children get the medical care that they need. And now 29 years and thousands of flights later, they've helped children reach top medical centers here in the United States. It's incredible work they're doing to help save lives, in part because of people like you. Tonight, Children's Flight of Hope is hosting its annual Denim and Diamonds event. And this year, it's just a little bit different because they're asking you to take part from home. Right now, people are tuning in from across the country to learn more about the mission, to get involved, and to help bring that mission to life. Because right now, more than ever, these children are relying on us to help them travel to the care that they need so that they can ultimately get back home where they belong. The evening is just about to begin and we can't wait for you to hear a few words from some of the children and the parents whose lives have been forever improved thanks to generous and dedicated donors. It's truly going to be a wonderful evening. I'm so excited to be here with you. On behalf of Children's Flight of Hope here at Raleigh-Durham International Airport, I'm Caroline Blair. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Denim and Diamonds Home Edition. Thank you for joining us to celebrate the work of Children's Flight of Hope and to share the powerful ways that you bring love, joy, hope, and home to our families. As Caroline mentioned, we are in our 29th year of flying for their lives. And tonight we celebrate every child we have served and every person who has brought our mission to life along the way. First, let me take a moment to give thanks to tonight's generous corporate sponsors. And I have to give a big shout out to presenting sponsors, RGA Investments and 3C Packaging. Some sponsors are longtime supporters and some are welcome new partners and everyone is appreciated. Also, I want to remind you that our Pappy Van Winkle raffle winner will be drawn shortly. So if you've not yet purchased your ticket for this exclusive bottle, do so very soon. Our silent auction will close at 9 p.m. So you have plenty of time for more bidding at the conclusion of our program. If you see something that you don't want to get away, you can use the buy now button. So last year was our best year ever. We flew 1,336 missions, an impressive 35% increase over the year before. And this was all because of people like you. Certainly 2020 has been a year none of us envisioned, but I am so proud that we have honored every single flight request and we continue to welcome new families. 19 have joined us in the last 60 days and our hearts and arms are open to them. All of this because of you. Unlike any other Denim and Diamond event this year, we celebrate our mission from our home. Home that for many has taken on a new meaning these last few months. Regardless of the walls, it's the people who fill our houses that truly make it our home. The children we serve go to their surgeries, procedures, and treatments with the goal of getting back home to comfort, to friends, and especially family. And family is what Children's Light of Hope is all about. We're here to reduce stress and financial burdens during these difficult days, accessing medical care and keeping families together. When I think about my own experience with my brother's healthcare battles, hey Greg, I know that we do impact the family, not just the patient. I've been part of the family in a medical journey and I know how real the diagnosis is for everyone. Tonight is about the hundreds of families we serve through your generosity. 
And tonight, we welcome people from all across the country, our children and their families, our donors, our sponsors, healthcare providers, and people who just want to learn a little bit more. We welcome you to our celebration and we thank you for allowing us into your homes this evening. Tonight, our event may be virtual, but I assure you the impact is very real. The children we fly travel far from home and their time away can be lengthy. Often our conversation is focused on getting the children to the much needed care. What we often don't focus on is the other half of what we provide. That trip back home, home to the surroundings and people that are rooted in love. It is the whole travel and healthcare journey that is at the center of everything that we do at Children's Flight of Hope. Travel to care, travel home, no matter the number of flights through age 18, that's a very special mission. Tonight, I want to share my own experience, my own why, and what drew me to this organization. Once involved, my commitment to support has only grown. When I was a teen, I watched as my young cousin, Jay, was diagnosed with ALD, a genetic disease that progressively destroys the brain of young boys. And then I watched as Jay's younger brother, Josh, was met with the same diagnosis. Like many of you would do, my aunt and uncle moved heaven and earth to get my cousins to the proper medical care, seeking out the brightest minds and the most promising treatments for their children. Watching what they went through made a significant impact on me, and it is what has encouraged me for nearly a decade to serve with Children's Flight of Hope. I have witnessed the difference that we make, the children who inspire with their courage and smiles, and the family who thank us for healing, for hope, and for all those trips to care and back to a loving home. When I think about my own home, there are three very special memories that rise to the top. Those are the three days that my wonderful wife, Jen, and I brought home our children from the hospital. Those days were full of excitement and a promise of the future. And that little bundle of joy was immediately the center of our family and our home. But hospital stays mean something very different to Children's Flight of Hope, children and their families. And I can only imagine that at the end of those treatments, procedures and surgeries, that nothing sounds as good as going home. Home to people that surround them with love. One of the children who turned to us many years ago is Justin. Some of you may remember when we first shared his story in 2014. Justin's chance for survival was once very slim. And earlier this summer, we were thrilled to receive his high school graduation announcement. Receiving that announcement and the note of thanks that was with it filled our hearts and reminded us that together, we truly do bring the promise of future. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear more about Justin. My dear friends at Children's Flight of Hope, in 2005, Justin was only three and a half years old when he was diagnosed with a rare form of pediatric cancer called neuroblastoma. The cancer invaded his neck, chest, pelvis, abdomen, eye, brain, and bone marrow. When he was first diagnosed, he was given a 30% chance of survival. He endured three years of high and low dose chemo, radiation, painful antibody therapy, frequent bone marrow biopsies, tests, and surgeries. He relapsed twice during those three years. Each time, his survival chance decreased by 10%. After his second tumor resection in his brain, the cancer leaked into his spinal fluid, putting him at an extremely high risk of another relapse, which is why I am overjoyed to announce there has been no evidence of disease for over five years now. I'm in awe of him, and none of this would have been possible without Children's Flight of Hope helping us get from our home in Charleston, South Carolina to New York City where Justin's team of doctors were. 
Thank you so very much. Sincerely, Justin's mom, Janet. My journey with cancer was at the time very unknown due to my age. When I was first diagnosed, I was at the age of three. You live from one scan to the next, and each one, you know, you're just hoping and praying that nothing shows up on those scans. I look back at it, it's scary. It was really scary. It scares me to this day that I could have died. We were referred to Dr. LaFaglia at Sloan Kettering. Through networking the caseworkers, um, we learned about Children's Flight of Hope. I was flying from Charleston, South Carolina all the way to New York City. So many smooth flights, so many crazy flights, uh, layovers. He was in treatment for three years, but the we still had to go back to New York every three months for follow-up appointments. Using Children's Fight of Hope, it was just, it was comforting because we always felt like they were just there uh, when we needed them the most. And then just being able to come home in between treatments, it was, we needed that time to decompress and reconnect. It was always nice to be back home. No one, no one likes being in a hospital. Home to me means, I guess, safe haven, safe and, you know, no, familiar. Slowly, you know, once treatment uh, was over, that's when I started realizing the gravity of the last three years of our lives. I'm out of remission. I am just as equal as to my friends, to my parents, to my peers, co-workers. With my recent accomplishments, uh, graduating high school being one of them, getting a job in a very popular area of my town, getting into college, when he got accepted into the culinary apprenticeship through his school a year ago, um, that was really exciting. We're so proud. It's, it's looking good. It's looking good. So I just wanted to thank the donors from the bottom of my heart for all the donations that made makes it possible for Children's Flight of Hope to um, accomplish their mission of helping my son and hundreds of other kids just like him to get the treatment that they need. We couldn't have done it without them, so well, thank you. First, I want to start with something that had a profound influence on my support of Children's Flight of Hope. Several years ago, I was at Denim and Diamonds when this beautiful young girl, Megan, walked onto the stage. A happy 16-year-old girl walking to the stage might not seem that unique to you, but it was an amazing accomplishment. Megan had been told she would never walk again due to her diagnosis of cerebral palsy. Yet after many back surgeries and travel provided by Children's Flight of Hope, there she was, walking across the stage, exuding joy from her accomplishment. It was very emotional for me. Marcia and I have been longtime supporters and passionate advocates for Children's Flight of Hope missions because we choose to support charities that save lives. Supporting CFOH goes beyond saving lives by giving children the invaluable gift of adding many years to their lives. Home and family are a very important part of the CFOH story. Thanks to our three sons, we've had many great days in our lives. 
thanks to some bad choices kids make, we've had some tough days too. But we always knew we were fortunate. The families that you are hearing from tonight, and so many just like them, have had way too many tough days in their lives. This year has made us realize more than ever the importance of home. And in my opinion, the very foundation of home is loving families. Tonight, we pause to think about our own homes and what home must mean to children's Flight of Hope families. The relief and the joy they must feel when they leave the hospital behind and finally go home. Remembering that moment when Megan took the stage at Denim and Diamonds is one of the moments that keeps Marcia and me supporting this wonderful mission. We feel so blessed to invest in the immeasurable impact of children's flight of hope. Some say, give until it hurts, but we give to play a small part in bringing a full and joyous life into the homes of these very special children and their families. Now, I invite you to hear the story of one of these children. I think you will agree with me that this little girl exudes joy despite what she's been through. Um, so she has had five open heart surgeries. Um, her first one was at three days old. Her second one was at 10 weeks. Third one was 12 weeks. Fourth one was just before she was two. And this fifth one was, uh, in June of this year. Um, so she just turned five. They had to fix my heart. The only reason it wasn't scary when they cut me open is because they gave me sleeping medicine, so that's not scary at all. We transferred her care from Children's Hospital of Philadelphia to Boston Children's um, to, in, like, I believe, 2017 after her last surgery. So I knew that we were going to need to find uh, a way to get back and forth. I started looking into flight options and realized that the um, amount of trips that we needed to take wasn't something I could afford on our own, um, the financial impact of all of her health concerns over the years. So I looked into various um, children's flight programs. Um, I found a few, but Children's Flight of Hope was the first that reached out so warmly. Um, they were so thorough. They made the process so easy. Welcome to Billy. <laughs> so to us, it's been a huge part of our, our journey the last few years. After when I was like done with surgery, um, I got to go to our apartment and my dad was there and he, uh -huh. and every one of our friends sent me so much toys. A huge part of my hope is, is her spirit um, and her energy and her optimism. I've had my own health concerns over the years and she keeps me grounded. I mean, even I, I had my own cardiology visit yesterday and she said, okay, mommy, what are you going to do? You're going to be brave and you're going to be strong and you're going to ask the doctor questions. Like this is a verbatim conversation with my five-year-old and she's like, and you're going to be okay. And then you can come home and tell me how your echo went and that you got all the goo off. <laughs> I feel happy after when I get home from the hospital. Eat. This is my dog, Mr. Pickles, and he likes playing with pillows. Yeah, he's my best friend forever. And I know that um, you met Mr. Pickles. Uh, he is one of the biggest aspects of the joy in our home. He completes our family in every way. He's our little soulmate. Um, so coming home to see, it, that was a very rough time in the hospital for her. Uh, we had a few nights where there was inconsolable moments of I miss Pickle. Um, and coming home to him, I, I'm going to start crying. Just the, the, the joy in her, in her soul when we got to see him after that six or seven weeks away was, 
like it, like my heart swelled because you could see it. Like it, it's not just, oh, I have a dog. It was like her, her soul is now complete because her best friend is back. Thank you to everyone who supports Children's Flight of Hope. Um, they have been immeasurable in helping our family through five open heart surgeries, eight catheterizations of my um, daughter's life. We have her four month follow up for Halloween in Boston. I, I am a little bit more at ease than I think I've ever been um, because of the level of care that we have there. She gives me hope. <laughs> um, it's, it's, I know I keep repeating that, but it's the truth. Thank you! Hope is a word that comes up in almost every conversation that I have in my line of work. As a social worker at one of the top children's hospitals in the world, I can attest to the role that hope plays for each and every family we serve. Hope that the next surgery will go well. Hope that life can settle into a new normal. Hope to be healthy enough not to have to come back to the hospital for a while. I work in the Center for Advanced Intestinal Rehabilitation at Boston Children's Hospital, primarily with children who have lost a significant portion of their bowel. When children are admitted to the hospital, they often bring or have things sent to them from home. Both patients and caregivers alike count down the days until they can return home. We see the hope of home every single day. When someone asks me what my favorite part of my job is, it's an easy answer, discharge. It's a celebration when someone's care can continue from the comfort of their own home. Our clinic offers treatment innovations that aren't widely available elsewhere. We focus on training families on how to maintain very highly specialized care in the home. From the moment a child arrives for treatment, it's our team's goal and hope to get them home as soon as possible. A key part of growing our clinical practice has been our work with Children's Flight of Hope. Early on, I could tell they understood the medical complexity of our kids' needs, and they loved their mission to help kids throughout their medical journey and not just for a certain number of trips. They're responsive to last minute medical needs. They streamline often complicated processes, and that allows me to help as many families as possible. Parents can tell that Children's Light of Hope doesn't think of their child as just a plane ticket, but as a person. When your child has a rare disease and long inpatient hospitalizations, there are many choices that you don't get to make. So getting to choose where they will get the best medical treatment is really a gift. For long distance families, Children's Light of Hope is often the only reason this care is even possible. When I think of donating money to organizations, I wanna see my dollar go further than just a little checkbox. I wanna see it flourish, which is what I feel that donating to Children's Light of Hope allows. You're not just buying a child a plane ticket, you're granting a family a priceless opportunity. More days, more weeks, and the hope of many more years to come with their child. Home is my family. Home is where I play games with my family. Home is where my cats make me feel better after my treatments. Home is where my family is. Home is when, where I'm happy. Home is where we are all together. Hi. Hi. Para mí, la casa significa lo que es unión, amor, familia, valores. Y son las cosas que trato de inculcarle a mi pequeña. ¿Qué significa para ti la casa? Juguetes. ¿Juguetes? ¿Y qué más? Cocina. Cocina. ¿Y eso significa para nosotros la casa? Gracias. Hey Alexa, what does home mean to you? It means love and family. Love and family. Home is a very sentimental place to me. It means I can be my clinically tired self without any worry. And I get to annoy him. Great. Home is a place where I spend time with my family, mom, dad, brother, and me. I like to watch sports. I like to play sports with my friends. Home is where I'm happiest. Home means that I'm happy with my family. Home is love, home is joy, 
Home is hope. Home is a bit different to each of us, but to all of us, home is everything. Tonight, we have seen pictures of smiling faces. We have heard from adorable Aubrey. We have celebrated Justin's future, and we have heard words of gratitude from their mothers. And in a few minutes, you are going to hear from another very special young man. No matter if we are gathered in a beautiful pavilion or sitting at home as we are tonight, these children and many others just like them turn to me, our staff, our board, and to all of you to ensure they get more of everything home has to offer. We all know this year has challenged us in ways we never anticipated. And that has certainly been the case at Children's Flight of Hope. The stress and worry of COVID have been heightened for the families we serve. Many appointments, procedures, and surgeries were initially delayed as hospitals focused on COVID response. And all of us, especially our families, are grateful that travel to critically needed care has resumed. We are driven by the fact that we need to honor every flight request and welcome every new family that turns to us. As you have heard, 2019 was our best year ever in every sense. We flew more missions, we served more children, and our three main events set fundraising records. That correlation is no coincidence. This year, events have been canceled or significantly changed. The loss of proceeds is significant and the impact cannot be overstated. So tonight, we turn to you. We turn to you to continue to bring these children to what is often life-saving medical care. And we turn to you to bring them home again. Home to love, to joy, to hope, and to everything. Tonight, you can be the heroes that allow us to continue to do this amazing work. But before we ask you to open your hearts to our children, we want to share one more story with you. We want to share the story of Yash and his mother's love. As parents, as grandparents, as aunts and uncles, as compassionate people, I want you to truly listen to the words you are about to hear. Listen to the struggle and listen to the perspective. Listen to why it is so important for us to keep hope alive. Our families count on us to get them to care, and they count on us to get them home again. Because after all, home is everything. Our family's journey started when Yash was four years old and has continued since then, and he's 12 now. We were blessed to have our daughter um, along the way. Uh, she also was medically complex and um, immunocompromised and required a lot of medical care. We connected with Children's Flight of Hope. We did not know about the organization and thanks to that life-changing moment, we could bring him here and um, get him healthy enough to stop being in the hospital. I started going to the when I was six years old. I've just kind of adjusted to the situation. Like, I'm used to it. It's not really hope. It's I'm used to it, and then I hope that something good is going to happen to make me not used to it. I'm used to it in a bad way. I'm really hoping to see my friends more, um, not come back to Boston more, um, have more fun with my family, have more fun with my dog, have more fun with everything. I really miss my dog. This is my dog. Hope looks very different to different people. And um, to our particular family, one of the most important uh, experiences that we had was um, when our daughter was three and a half and she was um, declining in health. And um, our last chance to um, give her the quality of life that we could. And with help the flight of hope, we could um, take her on a private plane to Cincinnati Children's and get her the care that she needed. Um, because of the care that she got there, the last six months of her life was spent with us, was spent with her not being in pain, was spent with her um, being able to enjoy the simple pleasures of life. Coming back home is everything to us. It's relief, it's um, peace of mind, knowing that our child is going to be with us and that um, he is healthy and stable enough to come home with us. It is our life. It is everything that we built. It is everything that we hoped that we can have with our child um, and with our family. At home with my family, it's amazing. 
it just feels so good because I know once I'm home, I know that it's over and I've gone through it. And I just, like, I'm so happy and I, like, I'm just so happy to be safe because there are some people there who, like, who go to the hospital and then don't come back home ever. We're isolated and sitting in a hospital room. Um, we count our days to get to that flight. We count our days to just go back home so we can do what we have to do to find normalcy. Coming back home is everything to us. Comfort, love, hope. What gives me hope is um, watching Yash fight the fight every day, knowing that he goes through so much more than I have ever in my life or my husband has ever in his life. And I tell him this every night. He is my hero and um, he is everything to us. It helps so many people, it's helped me and it's helped my family. And just because some people can't afford flights and it helps them. And I know everybody who's watching this today um, is here because they care. And I hope that um, you will continue to support not just um, our family, but everybody who works at Flight of Hope because their heart is in the right place. And um, for that, we're very thankful to all of you. And we're so grateful to have this opportunity to share our story and to um, hope that you are able to take away that you are making a difference in our lives and you are thinking of us um, when others don't. And so for that, we thank you. If you're watching this, then just donate more and donate now. Um, yeah, and thank you. Oh, thank you so much, Josh. And uh, my heart goes out and to you and your family. I want to thank Caroline, Jen, and Rick, and Dick, Aubrey. I want to thank Mr. Pickles. I want to thank Jessica, Pat, and everyone who has taken the time to sign up and show up here tonight. As Abel Zogberg once said, no matter where I am in the world, my heart is always with Children's Flight of Hope. And we are getting ready to take off right now and rewrite the story of 2020. This is gonna be a story of impact. It's gonna be a story of community. It's gonna be a story of sending a message to every family out there who is in need of our help that we are delivering on our promise to fulfill the mission. We're gonna do it tonight. We're gonna to do it together. And we are going to be giving together in community. So no matter where you are, and we know that we have people in Boston, Galveston, Texas, all of course the Carolinas, New York and beyond, even tuning in from London tonight. So no matter where you are, I assure you, you've got a front row seat to the greatest show available tonight, and that is the Children's Flight of Hope Denim and Diamonds. This is going to be exciting. We are getting ready to go all in and raise as much money as we can, and we're going to do it together. So I invite you now, no matter where you are, you're going to have to turn to someone if they're to the right or the left, and I want you to tell them, we're going to do this. We are going to do this. In fact, many of you have already started giving, and you know uh, we're going to pull up the screen right now, but if you So this is a time to get excited and make your donations. In fact, you see where we are now, nearly $30,000. And look, John, look here, okay, I can, <laughs> here we go. I want to let you know, listen, where we are uh, at $40,000, our good friend, Joe Elfig, uh, the bunny, here we go. It's rolling in. Joe Elfig is matching our first $25,000 that we raise here tonight. So why don't we just take it from 50 to 75 and make that happen? How about that, Joe? Thank you very much. Let's get the money rolling in. And I just want to celebrate each and every one of you. Look at where we are already at $48,000. And we are just getting started. I want to thank so many of those who made their donations. In fact, right away, you see Dick and Marsha Ambrose. A huge salute. Thank you for a $10,000 donation. Ray and Darlene Trevino, thank you for your $10,000 donation. And Paul Mills, right before we started, $10,000. There's Jen Wade jumping in. I mean, come on, John and Barbara Elmo giving $5,000. This is where Janice Perso 
Festival. Thank you so very much. We're going to watch this number climb. John Wall, absolutely thank you. Thomas Love, thank you. Great to see you here. It, look, we are not together in person, but we are together in spirit. And we're at $50,000. Here we go. The money's flying in. We're going to get a little bit higher. And Mark Rain, thank you. <laughs> well, hello. Well, well, oh, well, Mark Rain, sir, thank you so very much. Maria Sanchez, we're on fire. Go ahead. Let's put in that 25000 uh, from Joe Elfig and let's keep climbing because we are setting a record tonight. We're going all in tonight. Ellen Bellini, thank you so very much. I'll tell you, the money is coming in. We want to celebrate everyone. George Ryan, thank you. Let's go. You know, um, Joe, we're, we're so is hosting his party. Rick Gardner, hello, Rick and Jen Gardner. Thank you so very much for all you've done for Children's Flight of Hope for so long. Pat Nelly, thank you so much. We could not have been doing this without you. Alex Ambrose, 127. This is exciting. Look, Tanya, thank you. Thank you so very much. We're at $130,000. Keep going. Keep giving. Look, this is absolutely thrilling. Let's go a little bit higher. Maybe we get to 150. Uh, I'm not even sure yet if we've got our uh, if we've got our second. Let's just go ahead and make sure that we've got Joe Elfix 25 is in there. That's good. We've got that. And now we know we have a second match. He is offering to match a second a second 25,000. So let's get that going. Here we go. We want to go from where are we? 130 to 155. Let's make it happen. I mean, this is thrilling. Look at what we've done. 132,670. Dr. Fuchs, thank you. And Marianne, thank you so very much. And Jen and Dave Nesky, thank you very much. Everyone is giving together. You heard the stories. Bringing children, not only to the care they need, but bringing them home as well. We are flying kids to Boston. We are flying kids to Galveston. This truly is a national support system, and it is based right here in our home state. Darren, thank you very much. We're at 140, about 10,000. James Murray, absolutely yes, thank you. About 9,000 to go. Let's get that second match in there. Let's keep giving. This is a thrill. If you are with other people right now, turn to them and say, we are going to do this. We are going to do this. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Can we reach $150,000? You can find an amount that's meaningful for you. We have a full house tonight. We have been looking forward to this. There's Douglas Kenyon. Thank you very much. This is what we've been looking for. Gathering together. Lori Smith. <laughs> Hello, Lori. Uh, working behind the scenes, giving up front, and Harold Nunn. Sir, thank you very much. We, we appreciate you. Thank you, Deborah McLam. Of course, the number are still climbing. We are nearly at $150,000. The numbers are still coming in. So many generous individuals. This is what allows a charity to be successful. Jeff Causey, absolutely. Look, we are under $1,000 right now as we closed. Rick Reichardt, thank you very much as we approach $150,000. Let's keep, and Harold Dunn is taking us across the midway point there to 150. Harold, we salute you. Thank you very much. Jen Wade is giving again. Board president leading by example. That's what we appreciate. There we go. Uh, there, That was a $25,000 coming in right there. Now we're at $178,000. And Kimber, and Gary Bennett, $181,000. And Car Kara Hilton, hello, Kara. Thank you very much. It is great to see you here. Look at what we're doing, Dana. Now, Jen and Dana, we can nearly hear you, and I'm coming to you live from my home in Florida tonight. I can hear you cheering us on. So, Thomas Love, thank you. 182, 185. Diane Adams, hello, Diane. It is great to see you as well. Sam, thank you very much. 
Harold Nunn is giving again. We are breaking every record tonight. We're going all in tonight. This will be the story that they tell starting tonight and through the rest of the year, what this community has done, what James and Kimberly Morgan have done, the hope that they provide with Linda Jenkins giving together. You know that you are living in a community of caring and giving people. Ken and, and Jim and Judy Smith, people who are determined to care for others. $200,000. You're coming in so quick. I'm doing my best to keep up Mary Ashley Hill, $200,000 to go. This is amazing. Harold Nunn is giving again. High five someone. If you see Harold, give him a high five right now. Trish, look at where we are, $204,000. We are on fire. Crystal Hoffman is making a donation. People are tuning in live. Everyone is giving together. You see multiple gifts from multiple people. This is what it means. Giving is contagious. And Herb and Mary Ann are giving again. This is tremendous. Let's keep going. Anonymous is jumping in there. I was worried for a second that Anonymous did not arrive, but we are so glad you're here. Thomas Love is giving again. I feel like we are just going to be Aaron Caps. Thank you so very much. We're approaching $215,000. This could be the most that we have raised, and this is the year that we need it most. We have not stopped, by the way, fulfilling this mission. We have not stopped answering that phone. We have not stopped delivering for these kids and their families, and you hear in the mother's voice and the children's voices, the difference that it makes. Sometimes it is that critical difference, getting them where they need to go, bringing them back home, and let the doctors do what they do best. But we are providing that Robert Sasser, thank you very much. We're nearly at $220,000. This is what it means to be a part of Children's Flight of Hope. This is the Children's Flight of Hope community. And this is a very special group of individuals who are attracting great support from all walks. We have amazing corporate sponsors, amazing families, amazing individuals. Let's keep rolling. Can we reach $225,000? I think we can do it. I think Amy Kretzer, Amy, of course, it is great to see you. And let's go John Wall giving again. This is how we do it. Let's just keep marching. I think we could go a little bit higher, maybe just one more step in that right direction. Maybe $225,000 would be a place to celebrate. I think we can do it. Uh, Mandy, hello, Mandy. We are celebrating you as well. Thank you so very much. Rob Gooding, present board members, past board members, everyone is getting in. Edward Bacon, come on, let's go. Here we are at two. $226,000. I am excited. Everyone's going all in tonight. Hello, Barry and Darren, 237. You know what this means. You know what this means. We cannot stop now for till 240,000. Darren Bowman, thank you very much. This is thrilling. I want you to make some noise right now. Cheer loud enough that your neighbors wonder what's been going on over there for the last seven months. You can say I've been sheltering in place, reserving my energy for tonight, for Children's Flight of Hope, making the difference tonight. So can we reach 240,000? That's $3,000 away. $3,000 away would be so exciting. Who wants to join me right now? Think of what we're doing here for 2020. Everyone who's on the call, you have made significant donations. They have been uh, they have been huge and we are grateful. But I'm gonna say, if you're watching right now, whether you're with a few friends, maybe you are with a significant other, just say, can we do it? Ben Griffith, here we go, 242,000. Mary Porter, help us get to 250. Can we get to 250? $250,000. Flight after flight, that is yes after yes. Every time that phone rings, we will not stop. We will remain focused on our fundraising, dedicated to this mission, resilient in our efforts. Look at all of the corporate sponsors who've said yes, even now in 2020. Now is the time to say yes. Now is the time where we say, this is how we end the year on an amazing effort with amazing success and amazing contribution. This is contribution. And we're at $242,000. I'm believing 
Who will help us? Can we get to 250? Going once for 250,000 would have been 250. Now would have been 250. Matt Callahan says yes. If everyone on the call gives, I don't know what you'd like to do. One small step in the right direction. 7,000 away. Delaware Wilson, thank you very much. We're 243, 635. John Wall is giving again. There is nothing that we love to see more than multiple gifts. We are just, we are overjoyed right now as we climb toward this amazing number of 250,000. Who would like to celebrate $250,000? This would be a story that we would want to tell. This would be attracting more supporters, more people to help us on our mission. This truly is a nationwide effort. We are flying kids all over the United States. There are hospitals and families that need our help. Deborah Nunn. Now, Deborah Nunn, thank you very much for that. And thank you for all you've done in our silent auction. And Joseph, thank you very much for what you have done in our silent auction as well, because it is off the charts fantastic right now. I was trying to bid on some of that bourbon and what happened? It's sold. It's sold. It's sold. It's sold. It's incredible. Rick Reichardt is giving again. Now we're $6,000 away from 250. You know what? I think we've got a surprise if we can get to 250. We can do it. We can do it. Can we get to 250,000 now? But a bit 250. Missy Van Lorken, thank you. Here we go. Going once for 250,000. Going once for $250,000. Here we go. Give it a bit. Able to buy. But a bit 250. But a bit 250. We're going to celebrate big. The dinner poppers are going off. We're going to high five one another. I'm going to tell you who won that Pappy Van Winkle. But I feel like, as you know me well enough, I cannot stop at some odd number like 244. Let's do it for 250,000. Scott Anderson, thank you very much. We are literally just $6,000 away. I feel like we can do it. Going twice for 250 now, 250 now. Deborah McLam is giving again. Thank you so much, Deborah. We appreciate you. It says $100 at a time. If everyone on this call gave $100 more, there we are. Who wants to do it? Who wants to sign up and just lay it down and let's climb to $250,000? Going twice for 250 now would have been 250. Here would have been 250 now would have been 250. Think about all those who made these amazing donations already. Um, John and Barbara Elmo, as I said, at 5,000. Let me just mention some of them as we climb down. I want to make sure that you know, 249, Mark Rain is stepping up to the plate. Sam uh, DeFranco, thank you very much. 250, Robert Sasser, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, amazing, amazing, amazing. Give yourselves an incredible round of applause. Rebecca Coleman there, your name is on the screen. Pamela Price, here we go. The numbers, Dave Nusky, thank you, coming in. Rob Gooding, oh, hello, everybody. Here we go. We're at 276,975. Deborah Nunn is back in here giving again. This is incredible. Thomas Love is giving again. Uh, this is absolutely incredible. 277 thousand dollars 325 what do you think what do you think, ladies and gentlemen? Should we call it right there? This is still open. We are still giving. I was prepared to celebrate there at 250. You push past the goal as you always do, which what makes Timothy Larkin. This is what makes this community of supporters so very special. Uh, the amount that you give, your commitment to the mission, how you always go above and beyond to bring so much success to the organization, so much support, not only to our staff, to our volunteers, but especially those families we serve. Look at where we are, $277,525. I'm telling you, I am thrilled. I know that you are too. If you're somewhere where someone is with you, it is okay to give them the high five, the high elbow, whatever is appropriate where you are. Matt Callahan, thank you for giving again. 277,000. Susan Coles, thank you very much. And I just can't thank you enough. Should we just say now going once and here to wrap it up, just to celebrate in this moment, here we go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. 270,000. Let me go. Okay. There we go. And I'm just checking with us. 277, 725, going twice. We're going to be ready to celebrate. We're ready to celebrate. Maybe $280,000 is possible. And Sherry Ann Miller is making another donation as we approach 278,000. 
uh, and Rachid Bindali, thank you so much. I hope I got your name right. I apologize profusely if I didn't. You know that I want to get it absolutely correct but we're at 278. You know that um, you know that uh, the moment why stop right now, uh, Pat would say, Ben, I think 280. I, I'm just saying, maybe should we celebrate it too? Oh, Barbara Zogberg, Barbara, Barbara, Barbara. Let me tell you what, thank you so very much. There we are, two <laughs> unbelievable. Uh, Abel and Barbara, we are just so grateful for all of your continued support, so much that you have done. Uh, everything. For those of you participating tonight, you just have to know how special this is uh, and how wonderful it is to be in this community of supporters. 288,000. I tell you, that is absolutely amazing. And we thank you. So I want to maybe leave this open right here. Barbara, that is a great way. And, you know, thank you so very much. That is a great way now to think. Oh, hold on a second. Oh, yes, I do need to thank Tom, uh, Nan and Tom Merrick, by the way, uh, during that little flurry gave $25,000. So let's give the marriage a round of applause. Thank you very much. That Deborah Nunn is not finished, ladies and gentlemen. She is not finished. You know, if I could hear her right now, she would be standing up and saying, come on, y'all. I think we can maybe take one more step. I was just about to stop right there, Deborah. I'm going to announce the winner of the Pappy Van Winkle in one second. But I just get the sense that if Deborah were here, she'd say, Ben, when you're this close to 290,000, you know, you just can't, uh, you just can't stop. So I think for the sake of whole numbers and setting a brand new all-time record and amount of money that we're raising here together as a group, as friends, as families, as people who care about one another and who care for others, should we go for 290,000? It is just a suggestion out there. I'm going to put it out in case someone wants to do it, only because we like these easy and whole numbers to celebrate, you know, 290. 90 going once. Here we go. Give it a bit. We go give Tim Katyan. Thank you very much. We are extremely close to two hundred and ninety thousand dollars. This is what it's all about. This is what it's all about. We are talking about this, you know, the World Series and the NBA Finals, game after game after game. Well, Children's Flight of Hope, Denim and Diamonds, this is it, our game seven. And if you want to be that person who's taking that last shot in the fourth quarter as time is running out, you can do it. Thomas Love has taken that shot many a times and made it. So here we are at 288.975. We can go for 290 and we can sell 289. Thank you, Ben Dali, giving again. Thank you so very much, sir. 289, now $1,000 away, 1,000 away from 290. Then I'm going to reveal the winner of our Pappy Van Winkle uh, delicious bourbon getaway. And whoever wins that should be opening it immediately once you get it. So here we go. Final call for 290,000. 290 going once. Here would he go give it a bit able to buy. Would he go give? Would he go give it a bit able to buy? 290. Douglas Carr stepping up big time. Thank you very much. $800 to go. Here would he go give it a bit able to buy. 290,000. 290,000. 290,000 going twice. We are nearly there. <laughs> so very close. This is fantastic. 290,000. Final call for 290. 290 would have been 290. And we have all in 290. Jen Wade, let's give her Ben Griffin. Unbelievable. Oh, you are so, you are just too too wonderful, and we are absolutely so grateful. So I want to say for all of you who are gathering together uh, and watching us online, truly tremendous outpouring of support, so very successful. And this is the message that needs to be sent to the world right now, that uh, we will not stop, no matter any circumstance whatsoever, just like those young families who are battling, as, as Rick said, they will, they will move heaven and earth to do what they need to do for their kids. We have all been there. John Wall, thank you for giving again. So here we go. Uh, listen, uh, this is exciting. I'm going to just carefully watch that number as it climbs. It may reach a 300, but we're going to announce the winner. But let me check and see. Let me see. I'm going to have to find the name of our winner. It's here in <laughs> just, just a second. Let me just scroll. I have to look at
technique and Lisa Marshall. You know, you can pull that scoreboard back down for just a second if, if it's okay because they're still they're still giving. We'll keep looking right here. Oh, here we go. Cheryl Buchanan. Buchanan, you are our winner of the Pappy Van Winkle, what they like to refer to as nectar. I don't even think they call it bourbon anymore. It is, uh, it is delicious. It is wonderful. It comes from water filtered through the very best limestone you'll find in the entire world, right there in the heart of the great bluegrass state, which is Kentucky. And so congratulations, Cheryl. If you know Cheryl, I've said this before, it is not inappropriate uh, or awkward for you to just to reach out to Cheryl and say, listen, I, I understand that you've come into some Pappy Van Winkle. I'd like to invite myself over because during the sheltering place, uh, our reserves have gotten a little bit lower, have they not? So um, anyway, I am so excited. By the way, I can verify that um, all the proper policies were fo were followed during that raffle poll. So don't worry, you can trust that everything was done in accordance uh, as it should. So congratulations to Cheryl. Now, uh, can we pull that scoreboard back up just one more time? Let's just pull that up one more time because uh, Tanya uh, is still making donations. And you know what, folks? It says $293,776. It is $824 right now. The silent auction is going to continue until 9 o'clock tonight. But because this number is still climbing, it is quite possible, very, very possible. If you did like I did and you started to look at those amazing silent auction items, which, by the way, uh, second to none beach house is available in there. And I, you need to buy these things very quickly because the buy it now option has never been more popular than it has with this auction. We have world class bourbon, amazing wine lots. We have vacations in all of these have been donated with a very clear, very strong intention of helping us succeed tonight. And the silent auction is doing very, very well. So I wanna encourage you to find something that you love there and go ahead and get your Christmas shopping early, your holiday shopping done early. And so for those, uh, we want to say thank you. I wanna thank all of our corporate sponsors as well who really stepped up uh, and made and gave such a significant impact to our event tonight. And I wanna say a quick mention to air all of our staff at Children's Flight of Hope. Can we give them a virtual, very loud virtual round of applause uh, who worked so hard behind the scenes and thank you all for what you have done here tonight. Something that we say all the time, but I know it and believe it to be true and that is, this is a very short time that we have on earth and no, certainly it's our duty. It is absolutely our duty to do all the good we can in all the ways we can for all the people we can. And this tremendous outpouring of support tonight, you have absolutely done that. And for every family out there, uh, for every parent, for every child, for every Mr. Pickles that's out there, a real heartfelt gratitude and grateful thank you to all of you for what you've done tonight. So at this moment, we're gonna go ahead and wrap things up. And I want to let you know, share this link with your friends, share this with your family, invite everyone to come on board. Maybe by the time we wrap this up, this number will be at 300,000. But from all of us to all of you, a sincere thank you. We wish you well. Happy bidding until nine o'clock tonight. And for right now, we like to say, oh, stand by <laughs> as the number keeps going. No, for now, we will just bid you farewell. We will say thank you. We will stay connected with you online. And thank you for supporting Children's Flight of Hope. And now I've got a message from some of our very favorite fans. Let's take a look. Thank you. Thank you for helping me get back to my family. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for getting me home. Thank you so much for welcoming us into your homes and for supporting Children's Flight of Hope. You truly are helping these children fly for their lives. Thanks for being with us. Have a great night.